When we talk about medical innovations, most of them are going smaller, and that's what we're going to be talking with Joe Chiani of Massimo Corporation. Hi, Joe. Hello. You are, as the CEO of Massimo, just tell us a little bit about Massimo, and then let's get into the commitment that you made here at CGI. Well, Massimo is a company I started about 24 years ago in my garage. When uh, you were 12. <laughs> thank you. I know, a little older than that. But uh, fortunately, we made one of the companies who made it. Um, and with us making it, we've ushered in a lot of things that people thought were impossible to do, like creating a pulse oximeter that measures accurately even during motion and low perfusion, mm -hmm. to most recently making a parameter that's been invasive for many, many years, non-invasive, like hemoglobin. Let's talk about the pulse uh, oximeter. oximeter. Okay. Yes, pulse oximeter. What is that? That is the non-invasive measurement of arterial blood oxygen saturation and the pulse rate. Mm -hmm. What is it used for? Uh, initially, it gained its popularity because um, when a patient's undergoing surgery, mm -hmm. the anesthesiologist is doing the breathing and the heart pumping for the patient. So it was a way to measure and make sure everything was circulating right and the oxygen levels were normal. So if the oxygen began to drop from 100 to 90, 85, 80, they knew something was wrong. But now it's become ubiquitous throughout the hospital from taking care of babies in the uh, preterm area, neonatal intensive care unit. So now even monitoring patients at risk of respiratory depression from opioids on the general floor. Mm -hmm. So you catch them before, unfortunately, they die, which many of them died historically. Mm -hmm. Are doctors and other healthcare professionals ready to accept this kind of, of new technological advances that you're talking about? Absolutely. You know, we, we started, like I said, in my garage, and uh, we didn't have experience. We didn't have a distribution, uh, but we had a great technology, great idea, and now we're uh, the leading company in shipping pulse oximeters throughout the world. Uh, most of the U.S. hospitals have converted to our technology. The seven out of ten top U.S. hospitals have converted. So, yes, they're very receptive. Ultimately, the better technology wins. Uh, and uh, although it's a little more difficult these days with cost conscientiousness, but mm -hmm. I think people are recognizing that to reduce even costs, you need to think about process of care, not just the cost of the device, but can something allow dramatic reduction in, in cost saving as well as hopefully quality of patients. When I hear about uh, medical innovations, though, I think about the, the wealthiest countries are the only ones that, that can afford them. But you're here at the Clinton Global Initiative talking about bringing this type of technology to those countries that are not as wealthy. That's correct. And, and I think we're, um, we're fortunate. And maybe you could say in some ways uh, the approach we're taking is because the wealthy countries can't afford to help a company like Massimo exist, that we can maybe give our products for much less to some of the developing countries that are in need of it. Uh, I was talking to one of the doctors from uh, Liberia who heads up uh, the Tahitian uh, health. And it's important to them, too, that you give them the same products that are being used by leading doctors in this country to use in those countries. And he called it dignity. You know, the dignity of a human gets compromised when you say, well, you should use this product that's, you know, using a crank <laughs> shaft where you could be using the latest technology. And we're fortunate enough that we can do that. Well, tell us about your commitment then, uh, the, the commitment here at the Clinton Global Initiative um, that is in several countries, huh? Yes. Well, uh, we started getting involved because once we had created the non-invasive hemoglobin monitor, while it has a lot of potential and it's already shown a lot of uh, promise and success in the developed countries, like dramatically reducing blood transfusion, catching patients after surgery from bleeding to death that would go unnoticed or on mm -hmm. the maternal ward from uh, postpartum hemorrhage, majority of anemic people are in developing countries. Uh, about 50% of women in developing countries are anemic. And every 90 seconds, one woman dies from either complications due to pregnancy or childbirth, and 20% of because of anemia. And the good news is with anemia, if you know about it, if you diagnose it, you can actually do something about it. And, uh, but unfortunately, it gets underdiagnosed. Mm -hmm. Most of these places in these uh, villages and outside the last mile, as uh, Dr. Raj put it, uh, don't have anything. So now, the same way mobile phones 
uh, were put into the Africa instead of landline infrastructures, we hope to be able to skip the whole invasive machines that require calibration, that are uh, subject to dust, making them fail, taking these small, non-invasive products, put them in the hands of the frontline workers mm -hmm. to screen for anemia, and if they find it, iron supplements, things like that, get the mothers to a condition where they can go to that a pre, uh, the delivery, and if they start bleeding, there's some capacitance, and of course, if they're bleeding a lot, we can detect that too, and get them the kind of drugs they need to reverse the bleeding. Uh, so we're very excited about it. We're going to do it in Liberia, Uganda. It's a million-dollar commitment we're making, along with a lot of fine people in those countries, and we hope to replicate that throughout Africa one day. Joe, you have a device in your hand. Uh, tell us what you have. Well, this product we call the Pronto 7, yeah. and it is a very small, as you can see, portable monitor to monitor non-invasively hemoglobin, oxygen saturation, and pulse rate. And this is an optical sensor that you put on the finger. It shines light through the digit, mm -hmm. and the light we detect through using sophisticated signal processing, a lot of math, we can measure all these wonderful things that before required blood draw. Now, this is a self-contained unit. It doesn't require anything else to go with it to, to be able to communicate to the doctor? This is. In fact, uh, this particular version, of course, uh, uh, as you can see, is touchscreen display mm -hmm. and it has a power that goes to it and has built-in Wi-Fi to communicate information back to a uh, the lab or to the cloud that we've created. Really? So there could be, like a, a healthcare worker could be out in the field, and as long as there's connectivity, could be talking and communicating back with a doctor a thousand miles away or five thousand miles away. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. Now, we made a more rugged version of this mm -hmm. for places like Liberia and Uganda, and also made it so that it works on four AA batteries, so they don't have to worry about power sources and uh, dust, sandstorms, and things like that. But yes, fundamentally, same technology, uh, same breakthrough in enabling hemoglobin monitoring to be done non-invasively. Really? So y this commitment uh, relates, though, to Liberia, Uganda, and I think there were some other countries that you mentioned there, too. But anyway, they're very remote areas. Are the doctors saying, you know, yes, please deliver this today? Well, the doctors, a lot of them are ex-patients and uh, a lot of people that are being trained to help at the front line. And the answer is absolutely yes. In fact, when they were told they're about to get a device that can help them measure hemoglobin non-invasively, these women in these clinics dropped everything and began dancing. <laughs> so they're very excited, and I've seen pictures of it now since they've got it, they're using it, and they're getting great uh, results. And we hope to replicate that program uh, over the next two years beyond just Liberia and Uganda, hopefully to uh, maybe Afghanistan, maybe Republic of Congo, Democratic uh, Republic of Congo, maybe eventually to the entire African continent. Well, you're going to be able to follow the progress of the commitment through going to the website. We're going to have that up on the screen several times uh, throughout this interview. Um, I want to talk to you about something else now. Microfixing. I saw a TED talk that you gave, and while I was watching that, you talked about microfixing. What does that mean? Well, to me, it means very small changes, very small things that we can fix, each one of us that are around us, that maybe over time, if we all did it, would change big, make big changes, big revolutions that we can look back to and say, wow, the world is a better place because of Joe, how long does it take for a doctor to be able to learn to use the device that you have, and then how long does it take to interpret the information? Well, that's the beauty of the device. Because it's non-invasive, I could teach you right now. You put it on the finger, make sure the it's aligned, mm -hmm. you press this button that says test, and that's it. In 45 seconds, you'll get the measurements. And as far as interpretation, uh, hemoglobin level is well understood that if someone is less than 10, they're anemic. If they're above 10 grams per deciliter, they're not. So the interpretation is very simple. I'm not going to ask you to tell me exactly what you have coming down the road, but it seems like there are other types of device that, devices that you might have in mind that would be using the same type of technology. Yes, yes we do. We've been fortunate that uh, we've been serial innovators. Uh, most companies, when they start up, they have one great idea, and that's it. We have a gifted engineering team. We've come up with non-invasive ways of measuring carbon monoxide that's helping fire departments, emergency workers. 
were so you just gave the number mm -hmm. and um, we're also uh, uh, made med hemoglobin monitoring maybe one day uh, we can also measure glucose non-invasively wow it sounds like your whole company <laughs> thank you so much for what we're trying to be thank you joe thank you for being with us thank you thank you for having us thank you